but like when you when your light is shining and when you walk in your God given assignment and God given alignment, right? Even people who are not in your uh, target audience, they see your light. And they go like, you know what? You should work with that person because like I can see that light. Uh, we're going to talk about um, messaging. Also, I encourage you to stay, to stay till the end because today I have a guest on my show. I have a guest on my um, um on, on my presentation, one of my clients, and uh, we're going to chat later today as well. So um, now, uh, when it, uh, in order to land aligned clients with you, with your business, with your mission, it's, it's super important to have the right messaging. And uh, when it comes to the right messaging, there are a few components that you have to keep in mind. So the first component that you have to keep in mind is who, who is your person? And this is like, I think this is such an obvious part to understand your avatar, to understand your ideal customer uh, profile, ideal qualified customer profile. And here's the thing, here's the thing. Every single coaching program that I've been a part of, every single one of them starts with who is your who? Who is your customer? Who is your avatar? But this is what I'm noticing in coaching space in general. A lot of clients, a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of people in those coaching containers, they're missing the steps completely. They're missing the first fundamental step. And then, like, here's the thing. If you don't understand your customer, deeper than the gender, deeper than just uh, gender, race, and profession, then it, it's going to be really hard to market to your customer. Because understanding your avatar goes way, way beyond deeper than that. So when I say understanding your avatar what i mean by that is what do they like aside from business aside from career aside from um what they do what do they like how do they spend their free time are they like more uh family buddies or they like to go out they like to party they like to go they like to go on vacation they like to travel what do they like what what are they afraid of Except for the problem that you are solving, right? Obviously, if you're a business coach, like your pro like your clients probably are afraid of not landing any clients, not making any money. If you're a career coach, people are afraid not landing a job. What they're afraid of, aside from what you're delivering, go deeper. And this is where, like, and the reason why a lot of entrepreneurs, the reason why a lot of entrepreneurs settle on the surface level when it comes to your customer profile, in my opinion, it is because of the lack of coaching support. Because here's the thing, in my program, when I work with my clients, we always, almost always start with, who is your customer? Even if they show up and say, well, I know my customer. I know them so well. I know who I'm targeting. I know who I'm talking to. Like, this is who I want to work with. But in reality, when we start working together, it is way harder than they thought. Way, way, way harder than they thought. Because when we start that, like dissecting their person, like, okay, what kind of books they're reading? And also, um, a good way to identify your who is when you know them like very, very personally. Is when you write your content like you're writing your content for one person, for one person. And this is really important when uh, you already had clients. If you already had clients, you probably had clients that you perfectly align with. Write that content for them. What are they struggling with? Because probably they're not the only one. 
right? And if you haven't landed clients yet, if you haven't landed clients yet, and you're more so like building your avatar based on your past self, then talk to your past self. It's a little bit harder, y'all, because again, um, you are not your customer, but if you were to talk to your past self, what would you like to hear? What books did you read back then? What TV sh shows did you watch back then? So, like, and this is the like, this is where the uh, problem in coaching industry, like in general, we don't go beyond surface level, and which is like, well, I serve women, I serve, um, I don't know, um, um, you name it, I serve uh, overachievers, I serve, um. Um, I don't know, like passionate professionals, like it's really, really generic. And like, in order to, in order to speak to your customer, you have to know them, you have to know them really, really well. And for my career coaching, uh, um, professionals for my career coaches, this is, this is what we are also guilty of. Like, this is what also what a lot of career coaches are guilty of. Who are you helping? Well, I can help anybody who can like who is aiming for a higher role, who is aiming for a leadership role. But who like who is your person? Like who is the best customer that you can deliver like services? And also like when it comes to career services in specifically, right? And this is a hill that I'm going to die on, that you either like um you, if you are like if you are too generic, right? If you are too generic, um, then it's really it's going to be really hard to land high ticket coaching clients because you are serving everybody. And there are a lot of resume writers, there are a lot of career coaches, there are a lot of people who like they're just like you. How you differentiate yourself? For example, when I started my business, right, this is like, this is what helped me to build my business during recession when my industry is full of fear, full of uncertainty, full of uh, like indecisiveness because I knew exactly who, I was, who I, I was talking to. And also a lot of engineers could relate to me, right? And like, no wonder that I have a lot of, because I am a senior mobile developer, I'm a senior iOS developer. No wonder so many people in my career coaching program are you iOS developers. Because again, one person who I'm talking to. So um we gotta move. We gotta move. So like uh, another uh, like another portion of your messaging is your what? What problem you are solving? What problem you are solving? So um, the, here's another like here's another pitfall that a lot of entrepreneurs, especially uh, new entrepreneurs, uh, try like are falling really flat and struggle with. Like, what is one problem that you're trying to solve? And this is important to understand. Your one problem that you're trying to solve is really important to understand. Why? Because later on today, we're going to talk about customer awareness, problem aware, uh, problem unaware, problem aware, solution aware. We're going to dive a little bit more than that. Like there are more than three stages. But if you don't know the problem that you are solving, then how are you going to shift them through different levels of awareness? Like, And this is why your what, like what kind of problem what what problem you are solving is important. What you are selling is important. For example, I help service-based entrepreneurs, coaches, to get more clients through social media without paid ads. That like that's the premise of my coaching. I teach organic. I leverage LinkedIn. I leverage social media. And I help people to get clients either off the LinkedIn or, or off the other social media. I'm also not that kind of coach who will say, 
well, like you have like uh, 10,000 followers on Instagram and you have really good hot leads there. So let's stop there. Let's start LinkedIn where you have no followers, no authority and start from scratch because it is my platform. And then like stop the, ma the cash flow that they already have. I'm also not that kind of coach, but also like if you're looking for a platform where people are better, like buy better, right? right? Because again, yesterday, yesterday we were talking about like, your origin story, right? What is the platform where you can talk like, when you tell your origin story? And if you missed my li uh, live stream yesterday, go back to my page. I did restream today at noon Pacific time, but go back and look at the origin story. And look what is connecting and look and look at that, right? So like what? Uh, now, your program promise, your program promise. What do you promise to your prospect? What do you promise to your customer when they when they work with you? And uh, uh, when you connect who, what, and how, this is your program promise. And this is goes to your messaging. And this is very, like, this is what I give my clients. And I have, I have uh, Donovan today, like uh, my client, and we're going to, we're going to chat a little bit later, but like, this is the literally the formula that I give my clients. I help who to do what? And I help with or without or through what is the vehicle of transformation. Like, for example, um, for uh, for one of my clients, right? Like, I help IT uh, support specialists to do what? To break into web development without spending thousands of dollars on bootcamp. This is a program promise. This is a, a this is a, this is a program promise. Also, like some people say that it's your offer. So, what is your offer? What is your offer? So, this is your offer. This is your program promise. This is your offer. Different coaches say it differently. Again, people, uh, many people miss that. And like, let's chat about that. Listen, I'm spilling all of the tea about coaching industry right now. And listen, I like I can only imagine how other coaches might get mad at me because we have a problem, y'all. In coaching industry in general, we have a problem. We don't have the lack of coaching. We don't have the lack of coaching. We don't have the lack of coaches. If I were to look for another business coach, I can just go on LinkedIn. I can go on Instagram. I can go on YouTube. And I can probably going to hit like 20 business coaches. The problem with coaching industry right now is the lack of access. Is it not? It's not the lack of coaching. It's the lack of access, because um, I don't know about anybody else, but this is why we have such a diverse uh, market. I don't know anybody else, but I got into coaching industry because I want to work with people because I want to give people access to me. And no, I'm not like, I'm not brand names influencer who've been in coaching for 20 years, Tony Robbins, like, I don't know, other big name, Kaylee Roach, you name other, I don't know, like big, 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 big um, coaches. I'm not that, but when I'm there, when I'm there, I want people to have access to me. I want people to have that wide glove experience. I still want to do onboardings. I still want to have a uh, very, very personalized experiences with me and get the coaching and show up for them and and know that they're gonna uh, and know that they're gonna get me. That's like that's my highest priority when it comes uh, when it comes to coaching. So, and this is like again, uh, when I talk to other people um, and other coaches, and they might say like, "Well, I'm already working with somebody," but ask yourself, do you have access? What kind of access do you have with your coach? Are you going through the fundamentals with your coach? Do you know who is your who? Do you know your program promise? And is your message lending? And if your messaging is not lending when it's not lending, and do you know why it's not lending? Do you know what you need to fix? Do you have enough support that you can say, like, that 
listen, every strategy, every strategy can work. Also, every strategy and any strategy might not work for you specifically, either because you are implementing it wrong, your audience is not taking that strategy well, you need to pivot and shift and do something differently. But in order to do that analysis, first of all, like you need to like you need to be able to step aside from your business and look at it. And sometimes it is it is hard to do with that proper support. Sometimes you need that like assistant surgeon and do a surgery on your business. And that assistant surgeon will look at, at your business and like, you know what? Like shift this, shift that, like feel this, feel that. This is the problem. Because sometimes we're so much in our business because when, like, for example, when my coach would say like, hey, this is messaging, this is messaging, this is messaging, like, what do you mean? Bro, like, just, just tell me what you mean. Just tell me what I'm missing. Just tell me what's wrong with my messaging. All right. I promise I'm almost done. All right. Um, now, um, the challenger model, right? Like, it's also... It's also a vehicle to deliver your message, right? And this is not like, this is mostly uh, the challenger sales model focus on sales, right? But again, you can incorporate that before, before sales calls begin, before you get people on the sales call, right? You got to get people on the sales call. And let me tell you right now, if I learn anything in business, that it's really, really hard to get people on the sales call sometimes. If your messaging is not right, if it's not hitting right, like it's really hard to people get on the consultation call. And, and this is why it is important to structure your messaging correctly. Like, so it starts with your leadership. You take control over your messaging and you lead your people because, uh, because people right now crave safety. People right now want and crave safety. And, um, uh, and this is where your leadership shows up. When you lead your people, when you show up as a leader, uh, people feel safer with you. Also, strategically educate. Like You educate your prospect for differentiation. You tell, people, like you tell your people that other people don't say. And this is why it is important to not to copy anybody, because when you start copying your like, uh, like when you start copying your coach that you like, big name coaches, then you start sounding like everybody else, like everybody else, right? And this is and also when you teach people, when you educate your customer, you educate based on the data that you got that you get from your customer. You literally educate them on actual data, on actual, uh, on actual gaps, on actual problems that those people are having right now, and that's gonna put you like that's gonna uh, set you aside because we often teach about our solution as coaches. Listen, as coaches, we often teach about our solution. My program does X, Y, and Z. We have six calls a month. We do curriculum. We do sales school. We do X, Y, and Z. But nobody educates. Nobody educates on the problem that people are having right now. Right? And when you start educating, right? For example, right now, I do strategic education for differentiation. I'm telling you that like a lot of entrepreneurs are confused about their uh, about their uh, uh, qualified uh, customer, right? Because because they don't have enough support in coaching space, because they just zoom through it, because they think that they know it, and because their coaches don't ask them too many questions about that. Like, well, like who is your like who like who, what is your avatar? Who do you serve? I'm like, okay. Did we did we go deeper? Taylor. Also, Taylor, like this is this is why I'm like this is another hill that I'm going to die on with my coaching program. I tailor my coaching. I tailor my coaching to deliver results to each and every client. I have a standard process. I have a standard curriculum. Everything is standardized. But again, I work with people. 
I work with people. If I wanted to, if I wanted to just deliver a standard solution, I would have de de developed a course and sold a course without working with people one on one. Like you don't need me on the call. Like everything is standardized, but tailoring, like tailoring your messaging, tailoring and your delivery to your particular, again, to your particular person, you have to know your person. Uh, that's really important. And also when you lead, it's important to lead, uh, it's important to lead to your solution. So as a result, right in order to get support in order to get uh in uh to to get to know your ideal customer in order to get to know your messaging in order to um know how to educate um your customer you need to work with a coach who will give you personalized approach and work with you either in a smaller intimate capacity or or in uh, or in one on one or when one on one coaching is available and i have that offer for you see how i didn't start with like hey listen hire me because we're gonna work one-on-one -on -one. we're gonna meet every week we're gonna do uh every call is gonna be recorded we're gonna do x y and z we're gonna do sales training no like i started educating on the gaps that entrepreneurs have right now why people are not uh lending clients right now why you have like this is why people have optimized linkedin profiles optimized instagram profiles optimized social media profiles but no clients because they are missing this component they're missing they're missing essential components and they're missing support to fill the gaps oh i'm working with somebody but do you have the access do you have the support Yes, you are working with somebody, absolutely. And your coach might be phenomenal, but do you get the support that you need to fix and close your gaps right now? All right. I'm like, I don't know. I'm getting fired up for no reason. All right. Um, I'm almost done. Listen, so levels of customer awareness. This is like this is also important. We're gonna we're not gonna dive super deep, but also when you create your content. When you create your content, like uh, a lot of people jump right into the problem, right into the problem or right into the solution, right? I'm going to lend you clients. I'm going to help you sell, uh, to make sales. I'm going to help you to land a job. But like your ideal customer might not be able to understand or hear you because they're either problem unaware, they don't know that they have a problem, and your marketing falls flat on them and they're like cool story bro but like i don't think it's i don't i i, I don't think i don't i don't think that i have that problem something is bothering me but i don't know if that is if that is it right then problem aware they know what the problem is they know what the problem is but uh they uh they don't know what what could be possible solution? For example, for career coaches, right? A lot of people think that the problem is with the resume. But the problem is sometimes it's not with the resume. Sometimes it is the lack of network. Sometimes it is the lack of expertise. Sometimes it is the lack of executive presence. Solution aware. Solution aware is when people know what solution can be applicable to them. Right, and this is where you start differentiating your your solution. Why your solution is the solution, right? Uh, product aware, and this is like this is interesting. Like, let's say you are service based entrepreneur, you are a service provider, or you are a coach. What is the product? When you deliver a service, all, overall you deliver service. What is the product? The product is your coaching program. The product is your is the vehicle of transformation. So make them product aware. Make them product aware. Like how, like, and this is kind of goes into your 
into your pitch video, right? Into your, like, when you uh, start, like, talking about your services, uh, when, like, when they, when, when they know specifically how you can help them. This is about specifics. This is about, like, this is about your weekly coaching calls. This is about your unique methodology. This is a, your, uh, this is your, um, and this is about how you um this is about how you um gonna make a difference for them so like this is about that this is about that so and uh also and most aware and when people in the stage of most most aware like they then they like right there and then they know that they want to work with you they know that your program can help you and now they need hand holding, like it might be DM conversations, it might be something else, it might be the content when you are reassuring to them to bet on themselves. For example, in, in my business, right, sometimes I would post content specifically for very specific people who were most aware, who were teetering on their decisions, and I would post content very timely specifically for them and the people liked it but that when i when i did the survey for my customers like what do you hire me and they said like well your content like it, it like it's like you were speaking to me like because i was B because i was right all right so i want to bring a guest on um on stage uh i have a guest i have my client with me i have Donovan with me. Donovan, are you there? Hello, my friend. How are you doing? Doing pretty good. How are you, Eugene? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, so let's get started. Like, tell tell us a little bit about yourself, right? Like what kind of business you are running or what kind of business you are building, and what is your why behind your business? Let's start there. Uh, yeah, so my name is Donovan Brown. I am a web developer, uh, mostly front end, and the business I'm running is a coaching business uh, to get uh, people into web development, um, to help people, you know, who don't have a mentor or just don't understand web development, just need a little bit of help to get them to that next stage, to land clients, to get a job, and just to be successful in web development. Yeah, so, um, like, yeah, like, I I love what you do, and uh, I think in tech space, um, we never, we can never have enough like good mentors, and especially, and especially with you, like I know your very, very inspiring story. So, but uh, can you uh, tell us about before we started working together, right? And like we 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 had a different like interview conversation that like you're probably gonna watch uh in the middle of this week, probably like I don't know, like tomorrow on or on Thursday, one of those days. So we kind of went through that, but uh can you kind of walk me through where you were before we started working together and what was like what difference like you started seeing in you in your business and your mindset after we started working together sure so before i was uh using another platform to sell my uh coaching services um and the platform that i used it was very um it was very different it was straightforward but it wasn't enough for me to like find like value or get like a, a return on investment using that platform and not only that but uh i had issues with marketing i only had at the time uh, a few clients that signed up and it was more discovery calls but they would never return back and so uh that was an issue that was um that was running into with that uh with that particular um situation and so uh it was very interesting again because i just didn't know how to communicate my service and so uh i think the for me, the the need that I needed was someone to give me a little bit of a guidance and an extra boost towards, you know, being a little bit more uh, affirmative and marketing myself more, uh, you know, uh, more firmly. Um, and so 
I remember Eugene, you reached out to me a few months ago. Uh, you connected with me on LinkedIn actually. Um, and so you, I think you code approached me or sent me a message. I don't remember. It was, it's been a while. Uh, well, just a few months, but it's just, you know, um, so, and then we just, you, you, you did a live stream. I joined, I think I joined the, one of the first live streams you did in January or no, it was December. No, we, we connected in December. I remember it was a little bit before Christmas now, but January is when I pulled the triggers like, Hey, let me see what you're talking about. But yeah, December, one of your live streams, maybe before Christmas, I jumped into and you just, I know this is a common thing, but you spoke to me. So uh, I, I felt connected to you. And so I decided to just, you know, uh, give you a try and, and schedule something with you and see what you're, what you're all about and see how serious you was. Because I've talked to other uh, coaching uh, mentors before or so-called coaching mentors, I would say. And they typically run like pyramid schemes or like want you to sell something. Uh, one previous one was one where they wanted me to sell like groceries. And at, at first we had conversations back and forth on LinkedIn about IT, web development, and it sounded really cool. And then once I got on a call with them, it's just like, here's this charts and graphs of like breads and cereals they wanted me to sell and I'm like uh I don't think this is for me uh sorry so uh but after that call I politely declined but they were really excited for me to get on board and they wanted they they were just like so fixated on me and I'm like uh no this is this is not my speed so but you were different you understood the 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 issue I was having and you were able to diagnose that and we were able to work together on some solutions on how to get past that on how to market myself how to you know price my services and just find some common ground when it comes to just you know starting a business because this is my first business I'm starting and I just didn't know left from right when it came to that so yeah and you know like this is I think this is so like this is so timely because I was we were just talking about like the challenger sales model, right? Like they were leading basically with their solution with a bag of cereal, like this is what you sell. This is and like that's probably was like affiliate marketing or network marketing like stuff and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Um, but yeah, like I, I appreciate that. Um what specifically resonated with you? Because the like this is also the most fascinating part when I talk to people and they a lot of a lot of people say like, hey, um something about you resonated with me. And that's and, and by the way, like if you're trying to land clients, like you probably gonna hear that feedback a lot. Well, you resonated with me, but what specifically resonated with you? I think the fact that you were curious about me, you were curious about my background. Typically, people who sell uh, items or sell like a service, you know, they probably don't care in, in some ways. I'm not saying all, but, you know, they, they get off that impression, right, of like, hey, I or you can see right through them where it's more so I know what you're trying to do. I know you're trying to sell me on this. And you can just see right through them. You can see their scheme. And so you came off very uh, and, and, and you in a you genuine way that spoke to me I'm, you know, I'm being a dead horse with that spoken to me but you actually whatever you use very specific things to get into my background understand where I was coming from understand the solution you were able to diagnose it and that was something that I it, it, it was some things that I didn't realize that I was doing until you were able to like identify that right and talk about that and say hey I think I have you know, I think I understand what's going on. Here's the the things that you need to work on. Here's here's some suggestions. Uh, here is some you know some some uh, resources that I can point you to. Uh, and here's what I have to offer. And so uh, it, it just sounded sweet, even though you know again I was hesitant because again I've been down these roads of like you know people trying to sell me stuff where I'm just unsure and. Some of that nervousness got with me at first initially, but after sitting on it and thinking about it and thinking how you approach me in a more genuine way that came off as comforting and caring, 
then that sort of like those thoughts slowly went away and then kind of like just decreased. Yeah, I appreciate that. And um, another interesting factor that a lot, a lot more than one person told me uh, that they also consulted with, and this is like, this is absolutely new to me and I don't even know how to react because you consult it with your family, right? Because a lot of my clients, my one of my one of my very first clients, she said like, "Well, your father found you, and now he knows everything about you. He found your website, he found your YouTube channel, he knows everything about you, and he is so happy that I'm working with you." I'm like, "Okay," I was like indirectly introduced to family members. Uh, my recent client also said like, "Hey, uh, my significant other." said like x y and z and like influenced my decision to like actually work with you um you said the same thing that like you actually spoke with your like because like i feel like I, and this is like this is what it what is so important when you show up as a coach authentically and when you're here to serve over sell then it wouldn't family members that are not your ideal clients like they like they're not like i don't know i don't know your family but they probably not everybody is an entrepreneur and a coach right they're probably from different backgrounds it's, it's probably not my target audience right but like when you when your light is shining and when you walk in you got given assignment and got given alignment right even people who are not in your uh, target audience, they see your light. And they go like, you know what? You should work with that person because like I can see that light. And like that that means so much to me. And also we were we were talking about today the lack of access in coaching industry because a lot of the time what happens, people sign up with big name coaches, big brand coaches because we have a lot of good content creators and not enough coaches who can actually coach and lead you through it. When they when people sign up, they have some sort of course to watch. And then that coach may almost never show up or it's a very rare occasion when that specific coach shows up in the coaching program and actually coaches and mentors them. And then said they're working with their team members, their assistant. And, you know, like some coaches communicate that better than others, because at least I know that I'm not going to work with that coach. And some some coaches don't. Some coaches, they, it's it's only me, myself and I. But when you enroll, all of a sudden there's a program coach, a coach goes on sabbatical and never shows up on the coast, like halfway through the program. So uh, what was your experience? Like how much access did you get in my program? How much access do you get to me on the calls, outside of the calls, just working together? Yeah, I mean, I think the access is pretty responsive, to be honest. Um, the fact that you have a Slack channel that I can talk to you through, the fact that you respond, it seemed like you almost... You live on Slack in some cases the fast the, as fast as you expand sometimes. And so, you know, it, it's really reassuring to know that I have like this almost immediate access to you and get some advice and get some some type of lead way, even if it's something that's small or something that I don't quite understand that I need a question on or I just need some clarification. Like, for example, last week with that that one weird video that was like, I don't know about this. What, what do you think about this? I need to look into this. And then you gave, and I was a little bit, um, you know, worried about it because, you know, whatever the lady said. And so, uh, and you were able to like, like, you know, this is not something that you should really be concerned with Donovan, um, for what you're doing. Uh, it's, it's, you know, and, and the fact that you were able to just isolate that and, and put me at a calm ease with that, was really, really good. Um, and, you know, typically, like you said, like other leaders or coaches, or I would say even instructors for even online courses, you know, you don't have direct access to them. Right. Or sometimes like, like they're being there, like, um, you know, uh, 
in, uh, in participating and, and responding to questions, but it's typically, you know, you have to wait a day, you have to wait, you know, uh, or a week or something, because that person may be a vacation or just maybe a, a abandonment or well, it's not abandonment, but just, you know, uh, for other reasons, just not available. Um, and so, you know, it, it kind of gives questions to community and other community members have to, you know, uh, pick up and answer. And so, but uh, well, with what you have, um, you know, it's not like that. Um, and and it's, it's very, very different and more, you know, responsive. So that's my, what I appreciate. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, like, I remember that video, though, like, I, I mean, like, it's, it's, for me personally, it's like annoyance, because like, I don't give you tax advice because I'm not tax professional. Also, like there are coaches who will who will tell you, like, I will give you the best tax strategy for your business. Um, I'm not CPA. I'm not certified. I'm not qualified. And like, even though I preach the message that you don't have to be qualified, you just have to go for it. Like certain things like law, immigration law, taxes, uh, how to create your contracts. Like I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a tax professional. Consult with services accordingly. For me, it's just like annoyances and like you, like you absolutely right. And, uh, you know, this is like I was reflecting on that because like at some at some point I might have a community manager who will answer your questions, but also, um, I was I was reflecting uh, like on that like do does it really bother me right that you, you know, and you know like that's like that's my like that's my choice right I can either look at the slack or I may not look at the slack right like I, I I make a conscious decision for example if it is Saturday night I'm probably not gonna look at the slack but I make a mental note to respond to you like Monday morning where like if I feel extra expired I might respond so like stuff like that um but like my um last question uh -huh. Well, before the last question, <laughs> so what made you to invest in yourself? Because people sometimes say, "Hey, like, well, it's an investment. Well, it is expensive. Well, it is it is not cheap." And listen, personally, personally, right? Like, we're gonna talk about the price just in a second, and when I talk to my business coaches and when i talk to my sales coach my sales coach said hey your program is 5500 it's not like 5577 painful it is not and if you have that price it should be just painful and go home or or go home and i said you know what like i started my business to be like to provide access right and to uh, to and how do I put it? I, I, I created my services to reach more people, especially now, especially when there is a like recession, tough economic times, and a lot of entrepreneurs struggle with messaging. This is why I decided to provide this option for a short period of time. Listen, those prices are not going to stay forever, and. You, Donovan, you know that you didn't sign up for the price that I'm selling my program right now. It was a, it was mm -hmm. a little bit cheaper. Let's just be uh, let's just be transparent because, like, I when I grow, I grow is exponentially. With the price that you see today, you're not gonna see tomorrow, probably. Well, when you you may not even see that price next week or not next week, next month, because again. I listened to the market. I just did the market. I raised by I raised my price. Right. Like that, uh, how Gary V said, like, hey, like, listen to the market of market buys, raise your price. So um, what what motivated to invest? Like, why? Why invest? Honestly, there's a couple of reasons, Eugene, why I invested. Um, well, for one, I've always invested in myself, um, you know, and I'm always learning uh, the investment in myself was being able to take action to, you know, change my lifestyle. So when I got into 
uh, web development, you know, uh, you know a little bit about my story. I was starting from computer support and I taught myself web development. So that was me taking that actual step and investing in myself. So now was it, was it hard? Yes. Was it easy? Not really. And so it was a lot of things that I had to like learn and, and have, and, and there was a lot of growing pains that came with that. Right. And so, but at the end of the day, I, I, I achieved what I wanted to achieve. And so, you know, the next stage in my life is, you know, getting into this business. And the thing about it is, is, you know, um, with uh, like how you said, like, um, you know, the, the, the one thing that really uh, got me more curious about doing a business is the fact of the, the, the recent tech layoffs, the recession, you know, mm -hmm. there's, uh, I have colleagues right now who are laid off or are still looking for jobs, developers, talented engineers, engineers I worked with for years um, that are still on the market and still for every reason, you know, uh, having a hard time finding employment. So that made me think a lot about like, okay, you know, this could happen to any, anybody, you know, um, it, it's, it's some scary and, uh, and some uh, unforeseen uh, times that are hard to predict right now. Um, and so I think the best things that we can do is invest ourselves and make ourselves more versatile than ever before. Um, we're living in probably one of the best, uh, ages in history, as far as like development, free education, cheap training, a combination mm -hmm. of those where, you know, it's just accessible. You don't have to go anywhere. You can be in your pajamas and learn this stuff online. Um, 20, 30 years ago, you couldn't do that, right? You had to actually go somewhere. You had to read a book. Now it's just, you're live. You, you can talk to people, you communicate with people. Um, you know, that just says something. So I think we live in, in a time where there's opportunities for everybody and you just have to put yourself out there. Don't be afraid to fail and fail forward. And then at the end of the day, you'll be okay. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And also not to mention, we also do a lot of, uh, speaking of the times, we also do a lot of AI training, but it's not what you think. It's not like dump everything in chat GPT or whatever machine and then like tweak it a little bit. It's like utilize chat GPT, utilize other market research tools and then give chat GPT really, really hard time. So it can give you really, really good copy and sometimes scrap everything and go with your own uh like because literally we were working on one of your titles for your uh presentations right i said like well like screw chat gpt screw screw those titles like at this point you go where your people are at and yeah no it's not gonna no it's not gonna be a 70 and above score for your title but what is more this is kind of what we're going to talk about on thursday right like how your messaging is getting lost in technology and how technology can literally replace you if you're not careful and this is why i say hey like that that title like, it, 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 it doesn't speak to me it just doesn't like i want to i want to learn more <laughs> so like yeah um like anything to add to that? Like how how was that experience? Because also, uh, there are a lot of coaches who say like, "We will teach you how to use ChatGPT. We will teach you how to launch your program with AI. I will teach you how to uh, launch your program with AI." But I'm also I I I'm not gonna let you lose your message through the technology and abdicate your power to technology, but rather enhance it so like anything to add to that yeah um you know ai is very popular right now everybody either likes it or hates it or just in the middle right and so uh i think it's it's very interesting and fascinating um but agree yeah i agree i think ai should be used as more of a tool than a crutch you know um and we have to very we have to be careful about that because it's easier to get lost in the sauce with that with with mm -hmm. AI and just rely rely on it to heaven heavenly, where it just becomes like a dis you're you're separating yourself right. It just becomes right. like now you're talking like a machine. You're talking very machine. You're talking mm -hmm. in zero. This is like ones. Chat GPT because this is very yeah. very particular style. Like well, like that's just like that's just 
gaudy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep, yep. So, and and you know, it's it's easy to fall into that once you're you know kind of in the zone, or maybe you're just not realizing it until someone's like, "Hey, this sounds very chat GPT ish, or not as uh, it like you say, it doesn't connect to me, right?" So, you know, um, I think that's good. Again, that comes back to you, just caring and just instead of just you could have just been like, "Oh yeah, this sounds good, Donovan. That's fine. You know, whatever." Yeah. What up? And but you were able to recognize like, wait a second. Um, then we can we we can uh we can work on this a little bit more. So yeah. Well, like I appreciate you. Like, and by the way, I'm 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 checking the chat. Let let us know if you have any questions. Say hello in the chat. Uh, say hello. What what kind of what kind of business you're running? And let us know if you have any questions. So the video how to do high ticket coaching sales what can you say about sales training with me what was your experience like is it just a video is it just one and done or like is it something that we can like constantly practice together well i can say for confidence uh it's something that we can practice together you jump on the stream with me and or a call with me and we we you know we practice it. Um, this was something that I don't know how to do, you know, or didn't know how to do at the time. Um, and something I really needed some structure on and some, and learn how to do better appropriately. And so, uh, the experience when you, you know, pitched to me and I was the the buyer and you were the seller, I learned a lot, of, a lot from that. I, I wrote down notes. I, I looked at the video like two or three times and then once it was vice versa, the next time we met, you know, it was much better. Uh, I think if I would have went first, I probably would have most likely struggled. So mm-hmm. getting that, you know, that that lesson from you on like, this is how I would do it and coming up more my own way of how, you know, how to like, not so much copy you from a T, but just doing it in my own way that is, uh, that, that parries you or just have some inspiration from what you did you know, helped me to build that confidence of like, oh, this is not that bad. This is how you do it. This is how effective it can be. And then once you gave me that feedback of like, hey, you actually did pretty well. It's just, you know, here's some areas you can improve on, which, you know, I, that's to be mm-hmm. expected. And so it, it was just a, a good growing learning experience. So I did, I, I did like it very much.